May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we are gathered together this morning in this homegoing service to give thanks to God for the life of the Right Reverend Dr. Jacob Ademola Ajetumobi, our beloved husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, father in the Lord, and mentor. Known affectionately to most of us as Uncle Jacob or Bishop Ajets. He was Bishop of the Diocese of Ibadan South until he retired very recently. Bishop Ajets was a very kind, generous, caring, personable, and humble man of God. He had a great sense of humor, always practical and pragmatic, and made the best of every situation. In fact, he could be described as a real optimist, instead of the glasses half full person. He was a leader and a resolute disciple and friend of Jesus Christ our Lord. He was amongst all things in his diocese the people's bishop. He did not allow preferment to the office of bishop to change him from the humble servant of God that he was. He was a devoted husband to his beloved wife, Mama Dokas, his wife for over 39 years, a very caring father and grandfather to his three sons, Theo, Barney, and Tim, and their spouses, and his five grandchildren. Today, we pray for his immediate family and members of the extended Ajitumobi family, and all of us who gather today to mourn his passing. The preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2, says, and I quote, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart, because it reminds us of our own mortality. So today, as we are reminded of our own mortality, we also give thanks to God for the life and times of Bishop Jacob Ajetomobi. The psalmist in Psalm 15, Psalm 116, verse 15, says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I believe that today heaven has gained a scent as the earth has missed a scent. Like the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. Bishop Ajets in his early life. He was born in 1948 into the family of Chief Obanla Ajetumobi, a polygamist, traditional herbalist, diviner, and local high priest of the Yoruba gods of the pantheon of the African traditional religion. Bishop Ajet grew up in a completely non-Christian family where the practice of African traditional religion was the order of the day to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, a servant of God, a clergyman, and a bishop in the church. In his own words, in his autobiography, he said, I am a miracle child, born and bred in the crucible of concentrated African traditional religion. However, at an early age, 
an unknown architect of fortune and destiny separated me. That architect was Yahweh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because in April 1966, the year after his father died, the teenage Jacob Ajitomobi accepted Jesus as his personal Savior and Lord at the Scripture Union Count at the Baptist Boys High School at Belkuta. His early education involved his decision after his primary education to reject an apprenticeship in training with Fagbung, the London train, train, trained tailors at Ukebola Ibadan. And he chose instead to go to Ansaruddin Secondary Modern School in Obagi, his home village, where he was top of his class. The headmaster of his modern school saw the potential in him and recommended that he applied to go to the grammar school. So he asked for the headmaster's assistance to convince his father to allow him to apply for a place in the late admissions to Ajua Grammar School in Okeagbe, Akoko. In fact, he paid for the entrance exams with money from the sale of maize he had grown in his small farm. He passed the exams in flying colors after, and after his first year was given double promotion by the principal of the grammar school, Mr. Guy Garrido. He graduated from the grammar school, passing his WIAC exams with flying colors. And he was one of two students in the whole of that school who achieved grade one with five distinctions. A pretty high academic achievement in those days. And he showed what a clever guy he was. He was one of six students invited for interviews from his grammar school with outstanding results in agric economics. He was successful and was admitted to study at the School of Agriculture in Akure, after which he was employed as a civil servant. During his first role as a civil servant, he bought a brand new rally bicycle, which was a great achievement for a young man of his day with a government loan. While he was at the School of Agriculture, he responded to a call to full-time ministry during a meeting at the school chapel. He then abandoned his studies at the School of Agriculture to follow the call and was subsequently enrolled at the Ibaja Seminary run by the Sudan Interior Mission to do a four-year theology study program. During his time in the seminary, he met his roommate, Mr. Ken Okeke, an accounting graduate from University of Insoka. In fact, he said it was Ken Okeke who taught him to play the guitar, which was to become an important part of his ministry later in his life. On graduating from the seminary, he took up a job as traveling secretary of the Scripture Union, stepping into the shoes of one of his mentors, Reverend Dr. Mike Oye. He served in that role for four years and was based in Akure and later Benin City in Bendel State at the time. His quest for further education was the driving force that motivated him to apply to study at London Bible College, Northwood, now London School of Theology, for a BA Theology. He did the program in two years, from 1978 to 1980. He returned to Nigeria promptly to do the compulsory NYSC National Youth Service, and during this time, he met his future wife, Dorcas, who was a nurse. On 3rd January 1981, 
After a short six months courtship, he married the love of his life, Miss Dorcas Anikade Obajuwa Ni Arigbede. She was a qualified nurse. Jacob had decided as a young man that he would like to marry a nurse to save him the trouble and the difficulty of having to queue up in the outpatient department of the hospital because he was sure having a nurse as a wife would be insurance for him to good health and care, not only for him but also for his family. The marriage of nearly 40 years was blessed with three sons, Theo, Barney, and Tim, and also with five grandchildren. They planned to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary on the 3rd of January this year, but it wasn't to be because Bishop Ajet passed just a few weeks before that date. In his ministry, the young Jacob served in various capacities as Scripture Union Traveling Secretary in Akure and Benin City, and also as a secondary school RE teacher in various secondary schools like New Era Secondary School, Idia College, Benin City, ICE, and Federal Government Girls College, Benin City. He was ordained into Anglican ministry in June 1983 by Bishop, by the Bishop of Elisha, who was also to become his mentor. And later that same year, in December, he was made a priest. He was bishop's chaplain and also a school chaplain and RE teacher at St. Margaret's Girls School, Okeoye, in Lesha. It was during that time that he was appointed in conjunction with the CMS to be the chaplain of the Nigerian chaplaincy in London. He served in various capacities as canon, venerable, and later bishop of Ibadan South. In his family life, he was very devout to his beloved wife. He was devoted to the call, to the love of his life. The nurse he had prayed for as a young boy. Mama Dokas was a nurse par excellence, trained by the missionaries at St. Luke's Anglican Hospital in Wusasa, Zaria, where Bishop Ajets and I first met in the late 80s. He was also very fond of his boys. He called them the three musketeers. He was very fond of Theo, Barney, and Tim, their spouses, and their children, his grandchildren. Today, we can say he was a true family man survived by three sons and five grandchildren, and of course, his beloved widow. Today, our thoughts are with Mama Dokas, his widow, his sons, Theo and Rhiannon, his wife, Barney and Ang, his wife, and Tim and Jade, his wife, and their three grandchildren, in order of seniority, Zephan, Olivia, Zedi, Arabella, and JJ, Jacob Jonathan, who is only two months old, who was born just before 
Bishop Ajet's path to glory. And today, he immortalizes that name in the family tradition, named after his grandfather, Jacob Ajetomobi Jr. I'm sure he will be called. In our Old Testament reading, the preacher, the writer of the Ecclesiastes, said in chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, 4, 9 to 11, and I quote, To everything there is a season, and a time and a purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to weep and a time to laugh, to, live, to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, what profit had he that walketh in that wherein he laboreth? I've seen the travel which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. For Bishop Ajets today, that cycle of birth and death is now complete. Born in June 1948, passed to glory in December 2020 on the 14th at the age of 72. We could say about him that he was a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. In the words of the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy, he has fought a good fight. He has finished his course. He has kept the faith. He has left us with an example of a true believer, priest and bishop. His life was an inspiration to many of us. He was my personal mentor. And in the words of the preacher of the Ecclesiastes, a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. May the Lord grant him eternal rest through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our thoughts are today with the Ajotomobi family who mourn his passing and all of us gathered here today and all over the world who have on this Zoom service. This is for us a time to mourn and a time to weep for the passing of our loved one. May the Lord wipe away all our tears and comfort his family and all of us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for the hope that is in Christ Jesus through his resurrection from the dead. As the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But we will not have you ignorant, my brethren, concerning them that have fallen asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as the rest, who have no hope. For if we believe that Christ died and rose again, even so them also that have fallen asleep in Jesus Christ will God bring with him. Today, we pray that each one of us will find encouragement in these words. Mama Dukas and the family have been so dignified in their loss. They have shown the example of true believers in this resurrection hope through our Lord Jesus Christ. That hope that was in Bishop Ajets. They have turned their sorrow into the celebration of life, the life of a loved one. And just as our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to die once for sinners, once and for all, and for all humanity, so all who believe in him will be spared of damnation. And Christ is our living hope, because he conquered death through his own death and resurrection. And today he gives us hope. So Christ is, vict is our victory over death, to share with him through our thoughts and our prayers. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, if you are here today, don't worry about Bishop Ajets. We believe as Christians that as a believer in Jesus Christ, he is at peace with his maker whom he loved and served. Don't worry about Mama Dukas and the family. Just pray for the Lord to comfort them with his spirit and be husband to his widow and father to his children and grandchildren and for the Lord to comfort all of us that are gathered today. But I know one thing, that Bishop Jets, in his normal way would ask you to think about your own life 
and to invite Jesus into your heart as the hope of glory and the hope of eternity so that you, like him, will be confident of that hope when death comes. So I invite you to repent of your sins and confess your sins to God and accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord if you haven't done so before. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of sharing this day and celebrating the love and life of our loved one. Grant each one of us the grace to say, I'm sorry, thank you for, my, for forgiving my sins. I accept you as, your, as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you comfort Mama Dorcas and the family today and in the days and weeks to come by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.